Okay, so welcome. Welcome to this class. Uh, my name is Alan. I'm a teacher at SET English. Uh, and today I'm going to be talking about OET listening. Um, this is for, for OET. We, we are, SET English are OET all stars. Um, and I have been asked to do a, a very short class on part C of OET listening. Um, and we're going to talk today about signposts. Okay. Now, if you're watching this video, please feel free to type any questions you have um, in the chat. We're going to have uh, one of our teachers answering all of your questions as I teach. So please feel free, any questions you have, to just to type them in. Also, if I ask a question in class, try to respond in the chat and we'll get a teacher to respond to you as well. OK, so why don't you guys start by telling me um, where you're from? Um, where you're where you're watching from, and are you a nurse or a doctor, pharmacist, something like that? Let me know in the chat, okay? As we go, okay. So let's get started. As I said, this is a listening class, and we're going to talk about signposting in Part C. All right, and I want to start this class by just asking a very simple question. So I'm going to share my screen. You should be able to see this here. And guys, the, I'm going to ask this question: What are the main problems um, students have with OET listening part C. And I want us to just think about this very, very simple question for a second. What are the main problems students have with OET listening part C? What are they? I mean, type some in the chat now. If you're watching um, live, type it, type it into Facebook and we'll we'll try and respond to you as soon as you as soon as you do, okay? Um, of course, there are many problems um, in OET listening part C. Vocabulary, um, just kind of like focusing for five minutes for each audio. Um, ner nervousness, you might just feel nervous in the exam. But I think one of the main problems, okay, one of the main problems in the exam that you're gonna have is getting lost, okay? Getting lost, and you can see this here, getting lost. So what do I mean by getting lost? I'm sure many of you watching, you know exactly what I'm talking about here. How do you know in the exam, how do you know that you are moving from question 31 to 32? How do I know when it changes? Right, when it changes. This is what we're talking about in this class, okay? This is what we're talking about. I'm gonna answer this question. The problem is with getting lost because, you know, my name is, as I said, my name is Alan. I, I teach OET every day uh, for a school called SET English. And in SET English, we teach listening every day. Monday to Friday, we always have a listening class. And the students are always asking me, you know, how do I deal with listening part C? And specifically, they very often ask, or they say, they tell me, I get lost. I don't know sometimes when the question changes. Do you feel like that? If you're watching, just type yes in the chat if you also feel like that. I'm sure you do, okay? So how do I know when the question changes? Okay, how do we avoid getting lost? That's the problem. And the solution is, it's quite simple, really. I can teach you this in an online video class very quickly, okay? But it's something that you should keep in mind at all times when you're doing listening part C, okay? So the solution to this problem of getting lost is simple, well, is simply to, to firstly make a distinction, okay? So the first, the, the solution is this, we need to understand that there are two types of, diet, uh, of audio, okay? So there are two types of audio in listening part C. Okay, so I'll just put this, just to remind everyone, this is listening part C. There are two types of audio. Type in the chat now, if you're watching on Facebook, okay, there are two types of audio, types, sort of styles, okay? Do you know what I'm talking about here? If you know what I'm talking about, just type into the Facebook uh, chat now. What are the two types of audio? I'll give you a hint. Sometimes one person is speaking, but that's not always true, is it? Okay. 
So what are those two types? One of them I'm going to call beginning with D. And one of them I'm going to call beginning with M. Okay, so what is this? Do you know? Type it in the chat. We'll respond to you if you get the right answer. Okay, D or M. Answer is dialogue and monologue. Okay, so by dialogue, we simply just mean an interview style. Okay, so one person is asking questions, another person is is answering the questions, okay? So just to represent this, here is an interview you can see here, right? One person is asking questions here, and here is someone answering the questions. How do I know when the question changes here? How do I know when the question will change? The OET question changes. It's very easy, isn't it, guys? It's easy. The answer is, it changes when the interviewer asks, right, asks a new question. So this is really not very difficult. I'll just change, I'll just take the bold off this, okay? How do I know in an interview, listening part C, how do I know, um, in a dialogue, when the question changes, the answer is easy, okay? It changes when the interview asks a new question. Sorry, don't know why I put a K there. <laughs> a new question, okay? So, for example, question 34 is a question from the interviewer, okay? Question 35 is a question from the interviewer, okay? They will ask the question. It's very easy to know when you're moving questions in the dialogue style. Very, very easy. Okay, and I'm not going to say anything more about this. However, what about the monologue style? What does monologue mean? If you're watching on Facebook, just type in the chat box. What does mono mean? What does this prefix here mono refer to? How many is mono? This should be an easy question. Just go and type in the chat. How many is mono? You should all know this, right? I know any Spanish speakers, I think mono means monkey or something, I think, is that right? But anyway, in, the, in English, mono refers to, it means uh, one person or one. Mono just means one, and a monologue is one person speaking. Okay, so that's what it means. Dialogue is interview style, monologue is one person speaking, all right? So let's let's apply the same question to this. All right, here you have a monologue, just one guy speaking. He's giving a lecture or something like this. Um, and the question is, how do I know when the OET question changes? Right? How do I know? What is the answer to this one? This is not so clear now, right? This is not so clear. But the answer, it is really quite simple. It is really quite simple. Type into the chat box if you think you know what I'm going to say now. I'm sure you will. It's not the most difficult thing. What is the answer to this question? The answer is, of course, the answer is signposting. Signposting. Okay. So that's what I want to talk about now, signposting. How do you know when the question changes in a monologue? There will be a signpost. OK, so let's just think about just for a second what this word actually means. OK, what is a signpost? Okay, well, let me draw a signpost. Here is a signpost. OK, you can all see one here. Here is a signpost. What is a signpost? What does a signpost do? How does it work? Well, obviously, a signpost, OK, a signpost. A signpost tells me where we are going, right? Where, where we are going. So for example, if it says here London and I'm going in that direction, we're obviously going to London. If it says here New York on this signpost, uh, we're obviously gonna be going heading towards New York if I head in that direction, okay? So a signpost tells me where we are going. In OET, 
you know, it's a, this is a phrase or word that tells me a new question is coming. Okay. So it's really quite simple, isn't it? A signpost in OET, it's a phrase or a word that tells me a new question is coming. Okay, I'll get rid of this, sorry. So let me show you an example. It's easy just to show an example, right? So I'm gonna show you now an example of an OET test. Okay, guys, I'm gonna show you an example of an OET test. And we're going to go and look at the transcript at the same time. OK, so what does transcript um, mean? Does anyone here know what a transcript is? Type in the chat box. Just type in what the word transcript means, just so we're all clear what's what's going to happen. Transcript is. Just type it in. If you know what this word means, type in a synonym into the chat box on it on Facebook. We'll, we'll have a teacher responding. And that teacher will try to, you know, tell you if you're correct or not correct. OK, transcript just means. The writing. Of the audio, right? Another word would be just script, script, transcript. It's just the same thing in a way. It's almost the same. OK. Um, so we're going to look now at the transcript and we're going to look now at, at a question. OK, so here we go. Here we see on the left, we see, of course, a uh, example, OET question paper, all right? And on the right, what do we see on the right here, guys? We see on the right, a transcript, okay? So you can read what is happening. We can read it together. So the question becomes, how do I know when we move from question 37 all right, which is here. How do I know when question 38 begins? How do I know? Well, there are going to be words in this question stem. There's going to be words in this question that will be like signpost words. OK, so, for example, my signpost word here is typical admission. This is a signpost. OK, and what that means is. In the transcript, we're going to see either the same words or very similar words. OK, so can anyone see? Can you see typical admission? Can you see this here? What paragraph is it in? Is it in paragraph one? Is it in paragraph two? Is it in paragraph three? Where is typical admission? Just if you're watching on the phone, turn your phone sideways and you'll be able to see this clearer. OK, I'll turn my camera off as well. All right. What paragraph is typical admission in? What is the answer? Here? Typical admission. Well, I think most of you can probably see the, the answer here. OK. It's obviously paragraph three, typical hospital admission. It's there. So that's a signpost, okay? That is telling me that I should stop thinking really about question 37 now and it very quickly get on to the question 38, okay? So this phrase here, as soon as I hear that, okay, 38 is here, all right? Now I call these guys sign, we should call these signpost words. These are not key words, okay? They're not keywords. Let's make a distinction from a, from a signpost. This is a signpost word. Keywords in the exam, often students will underline important words like information, right? Overwhelm, uh, patients feel, okay? Uh, filling in paperwork. This is, uh, teachers usually call this keywords and I'm not talking about that today, okay? That's helping to get you to get the answer. That helps you to get the answer. I'm talking about what helps you to change the question. Signpost words, okay? So typical admission, when I hear that, I know that I've moved on to question 38. Now, let's have a quick test, all right? What about this? I'm gonna zoom in and I want you guys to type in, where is the signpost word here? 
What is my signpost word here? And what word is here? Okay. What would it be? Just type in on Facebook if you're watching here. Okay. Choose a signpost word here. And I want you to find it here. Type it into the Facebook chat. This is very easy. But I want to say, actually, there's two signpost words here. Be very careful um, which words you choose. There's two. One of them, I think, is a little bit better than the other. All right. So just type into chat box. I'll wait for a second. Just waiting for some answers to come through. As I said, we've got teachers who will be answering. And remember, guys, if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button, share with your friends. Um, it would be great to have lots of likes and lots of shares for this video. So please do that. Um, share this video with your friends um, and then everyone can get this. It's a very simple technique, but it's something that everyone should know. OK, so the answer is, of course, the answer is, uh, well, one of the answers, the easiest one would be illustrate is here and illustrate is here. So that could be your signpost word. But I think the be a better signpost word, much better, actually, is two words here, poor communication. OK, and then we have poor communication. The reason why I'm not so sure that illustrate is, is, is good is it, OK, but this this could be. Um, you know, um, this is not this is is not very unique as a signpost word. OK, what does unique mean? Does anyone if you're watching this video on Facebook, just just type in the chat again. What does unique mean? Unique. When we're choosing our signpost words, we want to choose unique words. OK, so what does that mean? Th this one is the most unique word. The answer to this question, guys, a uni unique word is unique equals not repeated. OK, so the problem with the word illustrate. The word illustrate could be, you know, there are many synonyms for this. This could be repeated uh, earlier on. Right. What does illustrate mean? Illustrate means example. Right. So you might hear example. You might get confused. You might to hear the word exam, see the word example here, but before the next question, and you get confused about when you're changing. Okay. I think poor communication is much better because this tells me, this also tells me this is the new topic. Right? They're going to talk no, more in this in this part about communication now. All right. In this one, they're talking about a typical admission. I suppose they're also talking about communication, right? But they're talking about, he, he changes topic to typical admission, but here the topic is, is kind of poor communication in general, okay? So anyway, choose your signpost words. It tell, you're not, you will know when the question changes. How do I know when question 39 uh, changes? Poor communication uh, is here, poor communication. Okay, what about 40 now though? A bit more tricky now. OK, so can anyone see? Firstly, I want I want you to tell me where is the, the best signpost? OK, where's the best signpost? Type it into the chat on Facebook, guys. Where is the best signpost here? And also, where is it? Which paragraph is that signpost in? Is it in paragraph one? Is it in paragraph two? Is it in paragraph three? Can anyone see where the signpost is and you know, what paragraph is, please type into Facebook. I'll give you guys a bit of time. I'm going to give you guys uh, 30 seconds. OK, that was a bit more than 30 seconds, but I thought I would give you a bit of time. OK, so, because you know, when it comes to scanning, looking for specific words, some students are much faster than others. OK, so and as some of you will be finding this very easy. Some of you will be finding this difficult. OK, so for me, this is um, this is my uh, signpost word, guys. Survey. OK, that's the most that's a very unique signpost word survey okay 
I don't want to choose, for example, communication again, because we had communication in the previous one. OK, or remember, I was choosing two words together in the previous one. OK, I think survey is the best here. Maybe also inpatients. You could have inpatients as well. But I'm going to choose survey and survey is here as a signpost, guys. It is here. There's survey. OK, I don't know if inpatients is here. I think it is actually inpatients is actually here. It's there. OK. So signposts, it's usually, guys, it's usually the same word. Usually the same word, but we have to be careful for synonyms as well. Okay, They won't be very difficult synonyms. It's not, this is not a test of your synonym knowledge here. So the synonyms will be very easy. What do I mean by synonym? Synonym is just like, for example, the word need is a synonym of the word require. Right? Those are synonyms. They have the same meaning, almost the same meaning, okay? The word evaluate, can anyone tell me a, a, a synonym for evaluation? Again, type in Facebook. If you're watching on Facebook, please hit the like button as well. Share this video with your friends. Um, but if you're watching on Facebook, just hit the, hit the, hit the um, type in the answer. Evaluation, a good synonym is a, uh, does anyone know? Assessment, evaluation, assessment's the same kind of thing, okay? There's other synonyms as well. There's actually lots of synonyms. These are very common ones. Okay, so that's the idea, okay? So just coming back to the beginning then, you know, the, quite, the problem is um, how do I avoid getting lost, right? So coming back to here, how do I avoid getting lost? Well, in an, inter in an interview style, you don't need to worry about that. Every time um, the interviewer, changes the question, the OET question will change, okay? When it comes to monologues, where there's only one guy speaking, again, it's not so bad, really. You just need to focus on signposting words in the question, okay? But I just want to finish this class by focusing on this idea, okay? So let's have this, sorry if you're feeling a bit dizzy, um, let's have this as the key point, okay? I just want to remind you again, the key point here is, how much time do you have before the audio starts? Does anyone know how much time before audio starts? In, in OET part C. Type it in, guys. What number is it? Is it 20 seconds, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 90 seconds? How much time before the audio starts in OT listening part C? The answer is, what's the answer? 90 seconds, okay? So in that time, this is the key point, guys, that I'm gonna leave you with. In that time, you need to be doing two things, okay? There's two things. You need to underline keywords, all right? So students will often underline words. This is what I said before. They might say, ask, opinion, right about aspects of services about service okay you might underline measured difference expectations you might underline uh, you know included questions on frequently they visited okay so you, the idea is here we call these keywords and keywords keywords they help to simplify don't they they simplify the answers so you can understand right uh, that's that's great most students do this in oet and uh, in sct english we as i said we study uh, listening every day and we we often talk about you know how you what kind of words you should underline and strategies okay let's call these keywords i actually prefer to call these main idea words in my opinion i prefer main idea word actually because okay, keyword, what does that really mean, keyword? It's just important. Let's call them main idea words. Anyway, the point is you can do this, but don't forget you also want your sign post words, okay? Underline a few of them. In this example, Dr. Garner explains, remember we said that uh, a, 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 a sign post word would be survey and a sign post word would be inpatience, okay? Now, 
Can I also underline keywords or main idea words? Can I underline main idea words in the question? Of course you can. Of course you can, right? Um, of course you can. But the point here is just try and give a little bit of time in your exam, in those 90 seconds, to, to signpost words. Okay? See if that helps you because you don't want to get lost. That's the key point here. You don't want to get lost and you don't have to get lost. If you just know this simple point about signpost words, they exist, they're in the test, they will be either exactly the same or they will be synonyms. OK. All right. So that's me done. I'm finished. I hope it was useful today. I hope you got a lot of answers on the chat. I'm going to finish. Um, by just telling you a little bit about the school. As I say, my name is Alan. Um, I work for a school called uh, SET. Let's put the whole thing, setenglish.com. All right, that's the school that I work for, guys. Um, and if you're interested in studying with us, we do between four and five hours of live Zoom classes. I'm doing this actually on Zoom classes um, every day. All classes are recorded. We've got video courses. We've got uh, many, many uh, useful things, actually, guys. So check it out, uh, SET English. Um, as I say, my name is Alan. Sorry about the sign. <laughs> my name is Alan, uh, and I do classes every day. We also have a really brilliant teacher called Paul, a guy called Lawrence. We are specialists uh, in OET preparation. Um, and that's it. Okay. Thanks very much, guys. Hope it was useful. And I'll see you see you in the next uh, class or, or maybe even see you in, in an STT class. Bye bye, guys. Take care.